Hey folks, welcome to the 30 days to learn Adobe After Effects course. My name is Vincent Nguyen and today in this lesson we're going to be discussing about motion blur, how to use motion blur, and how to polish your project using motion blur. Now motion blur may seem like a very very subtle thing and if you're a photographer you know you may want to avoid motion blur sometimes and it's really just a really minor thing that no one really thinks about. But in motion graphics, in visual effects, when you can pause stuff in, motion blur plays a huge role in just blending in things together and kind of getting rid of all the imperfections and sharpness. So for an example here, I have this very basic motion uh, graphics animation here and it's just a ball kind of rotating around. If I do a quick RAM preview. So as you can see, it's just a ball moving around and at first glance you may not notice anything wrong with it but once you get more experience you'll realize that hey this looks really really funny. I don't know what's wrong about it but it just looks funny and that's because there's no motion blur to it. So when you have really fast movement like this you really want to add some motion blur because it gives you that distortion, that rapid distortion look that you get and then you also get that nice uh, motion blur trail or blur that you get when moving really fast and as you can see this looks really awkward and a little too crisp and sharp and perfect. So how do we enable motion blur for something like this? Well I use an expression for this ball animation here. If I hit U on the keyboard you can see that I had applied a wiggle expression to the position parameter so that means it's going to move four times a second by 450 pixels around there each time. So we're actually creating the animation within After Effects. So because we're doing the animation in After Effects, we can actually enable the motion blur within After Effects' composition here. So I'm going to enable the motion blur for the composition. This enables the motion blur just for the composition. Now we can go into the individual layers here and enable motion blur for the ball. And right away you get the distortion already and you get the nice motion blur. So I'm going to do another quick RAM preview. And you can see that now we get that really nice motion blur, that nice trail and distortion that we get uh, when moving really fast. And this will really simulate real life. Now if you're doing uh, visual effects and composite, it's the same exact thing. When you're filming something with a camera, you're probably going to get some motion blur. So you want to add that motion blur in to your 3D composited objects and such like that. So motion blur is very, very subtle, but it plays a huge role in just making things look a little bit better, blend in more, and just look more realistic. So as you can see with motion blur, uh, this thing looks a lot more crazy with a lot more impact and speed. So, you know, it just plays a huge role in it. Now, one thing you need to know about After Effects is the native motion blur switch is not going to work for all cases, all scenarios. For example, if you just drag in a piece of footage, you know, and it's moving, you're not going to create any motion blur by hitting the motion blur switch here because we did not create that blur or we did not create that movement within After Effects. So how is After Effects supposed to know what is moving and what is not moving within that footage? Because to After Effects, that footage is just a flat piece of footage just staying in place. So we have something called CC Force Motion Blur and that's just going to analyze and force motion blur on items. So we don't have to apply Force Motion Blur to this because it's supported by the native motion blur and we're actually creating it within After Effects. But let me just create a new composition here. We'll call this Shatter. We'll create a new solid here. And we'll call this one BG. We'll make it black. And that's just so I have a nice background in the back. And then I'll create a new text layer. And we'll call this one Shatter. And we'll bring up the Align panel here, with Window, go to Align. And we'll center this thing up. All right, cool. Now I'm going to introduce you guys to a effect called CC Pixel Poly under simulations. I'm going to drag that effect onto the text layer here. And what it does is it shatters your text just like that. So I'm going to make a few modifications. I'm going to change the gravity to zero. And I'm really going to increase the force to about 300. That way things just shatter a little bit more here pretty cool but as you may notice it looks really awkward because there's no motion blur something is shattering just like this and things look very very sharp and it doesn't look like we have a lot of force and impact even though our force is set to 300 so because we created this animation within After Effects and we use an effect in After Effects you know we can just go into the motion blur enable motion blur for the composition and enable motion blur for the layer and as you can see nothing happens why is this 
Well, it turns out that some effects do not support the native motion blur. So this is another clear example on why you would use CC force motion blur because it's going to analyze everything and force the motion blur into stuff that don't support it, such as effects like CC pixel poly or maybe even footage here. So I'm going to turn off the motion blur and I'm going to show you CC force motion blur. And we just apply that onto our text layer. And as you can see, things just mess up. Why is that? Because CC Force Motion Blur wants things to be flattened down. CC Force Motion Blur has to analyze whatever you're applying it to. So since we're applying it to our text layer, it's just looking at our text layer. It's ignoring the CC Pixel Poly once again. So again, another clear example on why we need to pre-compose. We need to flatten things out. So let's go select our shatter text. We'll go to Layer, Pre-Compose. And we'll call this one shatter comp and then we want to move all attributes into the new composition because we want to move the CC pixel poly into the new composition so everything is nice and flat and we just have one plain flat composition so After Effects is going to treat this composition just like a flat piece of footage and then we have our nice shatter animation here and now when we drop CC Force Motion Blur onto the comp, it's going to analyze the composition, which is just pretty much like a flat footage layer. And as you can see, we get these nice motion blur here. And as you can see, it really does make a huge difference in the impact, in the force, in the movement, in the magnitude of motion when you apply Force Motion Blur. Now, Motion Blur Samples is the duplicate the number of duplicates or I guess the quality of the motion blur. So as you can see, CC Force Motion Blur just duplicates pretty much the contents of the element here, in this case our shatter comp, and it makes a whole bunch of copies of it to kind of create that trailing blur. So as you can see, if we set it to a lower number such as 3, you can see that it just creates 3 copies and just kind of blurs them out like that. But if you really crank it up to around 12, you can see that we get these really nice smooth motion blurs. So you want to play around with the blur samples. It's kind of like the quality of your motion blur. And you know you don't want to get too crazy with it because it is really, really render intensive and it'll make your renders really, really long. You have your shutter angle and then you also have the ability to disable the native motion blur and enable them. So a really useful effect and this has just been a really quick overview on how to use motion blur, the different types of scenarios you get when using motion blur and just the importance of motion blur overall in your animations and your composite. Just a really important minor factor that's quite often overlooked. So in the next lesson we're going to be talking about keying within After Effects. I'll introduce you to After Effects keying effect which is key light and we'll just take a look at how to remove green screen footage. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys. If you guys have any other questions don't hesitate to leave me a message in the forums and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And once again guys my name is Vincent Nguyen and I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye guys.